Hi guys, I hope you're all well. Today I wanted to talk about a topic that has helped me recently and I want to help you as well hopefully with it and that is five ways to stop overthinking. Now this is of course very beneficial for your mental health but it's beneficial in many other ways too in terms of how you respond to other people, how you respond to your job life, your hobby life and everything else in between. So I'm going to give you my five top tips and I hope you enjoy but before we do make sure that you are subscribed because I post a new video talking about either health nutrition or fitness every Wednesday and Sunday at 5 p.m. yes two videos a week so I want to see you there I have to stop overthinking is writing down your problems. Now this doesn't mean that you have to write them down every way every day. I'll be honest, I absolutely hate keeping journals, keeping diaries, anything like that. I just find it a bit tedious. I love reading them and looking back on them but actually doing it all the time is not for me. So one way that I write my problems down is I will just get a piece of paper or a word document or anything and just write down what is bothering me and then when I've got a list of what is problems in my life currently, I will decide what ones are in my control and what ones aren't. So for example, say I was overthinking about, and a really stupid one that always comes to mind when I think of this, overthinking that my boyfriend's going to leave me for no reason, he's not made any assumption that he will do, I just always overthink that. So um, with that, that is in my control because I could just ask him, <laughs> but that's just one thing. But whereas if it's out of my control, so if I'm overthinking the news, say I've seen something concerning on social media that I have no control of, I will try and let it go. I will try and forget about it because what's the point in worrying about something that you can't control? And what I will do in that situation that I can control is I will limit my time on social media or looking at the news because I know it will just make me feel worse. So writing things down, not constantly, but when they pop in your head is a really good one. And I read recently as well, if you keep a piece of paper or a notebook or whatever by your bed, when you can't sleep at night because you're overthinking too much, write down what the problem is that you're thinking about and then in the morning address it and try and work through it because some things as I said you can work through and some things you can't and if it's something that's been playing on your mind for a while whether it might be a health issue or family issue or friendship drama if you write it down you can look at it the next day with a clear head and think okay what can I do about this and if you can do something about it then do that even if it's scary it will make you feel so much better after you've done it and you can move on and if you can't control it then just try and put your mind into other scenarios and aspects in your life. Distract yourself basically is what I'm saying here. The second top tip and the one that didn't work for me, I have been trying it but unfortunately I just don't think it's for me, is keep a journal. So instead of just writing things down on the off chance that you feel bad, keeping a journal can help you realise how you feel in those moments. So say you're constantly feeling stressed when you have to call up the doctors or order a prescription then when you can notice that pattern, you can think, okay, what can I do about that to stop that? If you're constantly overthinking about a friendship you have, look at why it's that person constantly and why they're making you feel that way and why you feel that way as well. Just look at for patterns. So when you write that journal, you can talk about all your emotions, not just the overthinking ones. Think about what makes you happy, what made you stressed, what made you anxious, what made you sad. And then the stress and anxious, th anxious things you can either eliminate or work through, especially if it's things that you can't not do, like jobs. But things that make you happy, do more of that. Things that make you motivated and excited and made you laugh. Little things like that. Concentrate on those and then you'll be able to add those patterns more into your day rather than spending most of your time worried and struggling. And especially when you're overthinking, sometimes it is good to write it down in a constant thing so you can then see how often you worry about it. And as I said, if you can control it, do something about it because there's no point spending a week, a month, six months worrying about something when you could have done it on that first day and never had to worry about it again. I had this quite recently where I had a scare of some sort and I went and got professional help for it and I have been sat on this problem for probably two years worrying about it on and off and I went to get professional help and they said no you're fine, everything's fine and 
I should have gone way earlier because clearly that's all I needed to know and since then I haven't worried about it since because I haven't had to because I got professional help to deal with it. So when you notice that pattern when you're journaling and you're writing it down and you're constantly seeing the same issues, work through it, find someone else that you can work through it too and just deal with it in a way that is beneficial to you and of course if that means talking it out with your friends so you don't feel so alone or getting professional help like I did or even writing it down again like talking to yourself in the third person so it's as if your past self is talking to your future self so you can read that back as well and think actually I've worried about this before and then I didn't need to either and so thankfully that past me has helped me relax again which can be so beneficial. The third one and the one that has helped me most is read or distract your brain. So a lot of people do most of their overthinking before they go to bed or when they're lying in bed. They've turned the lights off, they know they have to sleep soon otherwise they won't get a good night's sleep but their brain just keeps talking and talking to them. The best thing to do in that situation is distract yourself. So before I got my Kindle which I absolutely love and highly recommend I did a review on it. I would listen to podcasts or Twitch streams. So there is a YouTuber I absolutely love. He's called Call Me Kevin. And I don't know why, but I find him really calming and relaxing and really enjoyable to watch as well. And he started to take all of his Twitch streams and archive them on a YouTube channel, a specific YouTube channel. And these videos were the full stream in full. So they were like two, three, four hours long. And I knew because I wouldn't be engaged with it, and would just be using it as background noise, that would calm me enough that I would be able to sleep and it would stop my overthinking. It would stop me constantly running different things through my head for hours on end and not getting a good night's sleep, which then in turn would be a whole mess. And so find someone or a podcast or anything that you could listen to, an audiobook, anything that you can listen to, what I would do is I would search up on my laptop, put the brightness all the way down so the brightness wasn't there, so I wasn't um, having blue light or anything like that, and I'd put the volume on low just so I could hear it, and i just let myself fall asleep. I wouldn't like turn it off or anything, I'd just be like, there'd be a point where I fall asleep, and then in the middle of the night I'd probably wake up, shut my laptop because I realised it's still open, and drift back off and it'd be absolutely great and I do the same thing with reading so now I have my kindle which doesn't have blue light which is incredible because yes it's an electronic device but it's not having the same detrimental effects as say your phone your tablet your laptop is I am able to just read and read and read and non not stop until I'm tired literally I will read until I'm like this and I can't read the words anymore I will shut my kindle and I'll be gone and it's so beneficial for making sure that your brain is distracted so it's not constantly talking to itself and running over the cringy moment you had at school or that comment you made about someone that maybe you shouldn't have made and now you feel bad or any other sort of thing that you're overthinking, it's giving it something else to concentrate on so you can get a good night's sleep. And literally, if I can tell you any of these tips that you should take away, it would be this one because it is incredible for helping. The fourth tip is talk to someone about it. Now, as I've already said, when you're journaling, you'll be able to see patterns in your behavior and emotions. And so if you're able to see those patterns, you should be able to work through it, but obviously, a lot of the time people who are stuck in these cycles of self-abuse of not being able to get out of it and constantly just digging that hole deeper it's very hard to find a way out of it yourself so find someone that you trust that you love that you know will be there for you and can help you because their mental state is okay it's no good going to someone who's having their own issues and just bombarding them with yours too find someone who you know will listen to you and that could be a friend, a family member or someone professional. Call up a psychiatrist, call the NHS if you really think it's gonna get that bad and just try and get that help. And usually, especially when you're worried about something, say the news or something you've seen on social media like any of the wars, the pandemic, anything like that, talking to someone and saying, hey, I'm scared, they could say, yes, I'm scared too. And then you won't feel so alone. You won't feel like your problems or worries are insignificant and stupid because someone else can resonate with that too. And that's the big thing is feeling that collective and having someone to go to. And of course, make sure that they're okay with that. Don't just go to someone and say, I need a rant and just vent all your issues because then 
your problem shared is a problem halved, but they're taking on that half. They're taking on that and having to deal with that themselves. And so make sure that they are okay with taking that. Always set boundaries. Make sure you've got consent to talk to them about this because you don't then want them to go home and suddenly think, oh, there is a war going on. Like, oh, there is a pandemic, you know? You don't want them going and overthinking themselves. But yes, talking to someone can really help, especially when you feel like you're the only one. It can really help ground you and make you realise that everyone goes through these problems and you're not alone and it is okay to be scared or anxious or worried and it's completely normal and you will get through it. And the final tip and another tip that has really helped me is take a break from social media. Now, social media can be a cesspool of terrible people. Social media can be absolutely awful, I know firsthand. And recently I have constantly been finding myself where I will be scrolling on Twitter, for example, and I'll see something and it will spark an anger reaction in me. Like my immediate response will be stress or anger or annoyance or anything like that. And so then I'd go off the app because I know I don't want to feel like that. Same with Instagram, I may see someone that I follow that's really attractive and feel jealousy or upset or resentment. And I know that that's me projecting onto them, not them. You know, they're just sharing that lovely beach picture in their bikini and it's me projecting onto them. Like, why don't I look like that? Why aren't I on that beach? Why aren't I making money from social media? Why, why, why? And so taking a break from it can be so helpful. You can put screen time limits on your phone. So I have a limit of an hour for every app that I have basically, um, apart from my messenger ones, because I talk to people all the time um, to make sure that I'm not constantly on it. I mute words and um, block things that I don't want to see. I unfollow people. I have no loyalties to anyone. If you put up something that I don't want to see, you're gone. I don't care who you are, you are gone. If you're someone I know in real life, I can talk to you about that. But if you're someone I've just met online, then I have no loyalties to you, bye, <laughs> you know? So uh, set those boundaries with yourself. Make sure that you know what you are okay and not okay with because you could see something on social media that does worry you and scare you and that will just make you feel worse and there's no point in doing that. So make sure that you are looking after yourself and make sure that when you're looking on social media, you're looking at it for good reasons. Now, instead, of being resentful or jealous of the girls I follow on Instagram, I use them as inspiration. I think, wow, they can do that, so can I. When I'm on Twitter and I see something I don't want to see, I immediately get off it or I block it or I mute it or whatever. I just remove myself from that situation. And it's so beneficial because suddenly you're not surrounded by people that are yelling and talking about things that really in the scope of the, like, the world doesn't matter. Like You've got to remember, we're all just on a rock floating through space with a finite amount of time on it and you're going to complain that, I don't know, Sainsbury's want to remove self-service? No, want to only have self-service checkouts? Does it matter? Like, yes, if you're someone where that does matter to you, great. But if it doesn't matter to you, don't look at it, don't bother, you know? There's so many things going on in the world right now that aren't good that I don't even know much about and people try to talk to me about them and I go, mm-mm, no. I haven't looked at that, I don't know what's going on and I don't want to know what's going on because I am setting healthy boundaries to make sure that my mental health is kept in check. Now, ignorance is bliss. You can't be ignorant about everything. You have to be somewhat understanding about what is happening in the world right now to keep informed and updated, but you don't have to have it as a constant stream. So set limits on your social media. Remove yourself from the app when you start feeling a negative emotion from it and go do something else. Go cook something, go read a book, go for a walk, just get away from it so that when you come back to it, you have a fresh eyes on it again and you are able to see it as a positive thing again rather than a negative. It's a big learning curve. We are a social media generation. It's all we know, but we need to be able to look after our boundaries and as social animals that we are, we are not built to always be on technology and always be on social media. And we need time outside. We need time with real connection in real life, in person. We need time to have nutritious meals, exercise, other forms of entertainment, you know. And just being on social media all the time can be so detrimental and can really add to your overthinking when you're going to sleep at night. So 
That is my top five tips. I hope they helped you. This was a quick little video, but I thought that they could be really handy for some people, so I hope they are. Please give me a like if you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments what tips you are going to take on, what tips you hope will help you, and any tips that I didn't mention that you think should be mentioned so other people know and can implement them as well. But yes, I hope to see you next time, and have a good rest of your day. Bye.